All right, hi everyone, welcome back. This is going to be a video presentation on salt brining for fermentation, more specifically lacto-fermentation. This is the same type of salt brine that I use for all of my uh, vegetable ferments. I am not a big fan of dry salting my ferments, but I prefer a wet brine. And so uh, basically you are going to want a 3.5% salinity uh, for your salt brine. And so all we're going to do is we are going to add 35 grams of salt, which is about three tablespoons of salt. And we're going to fill the jar up with water until I have one kilogram or one liter of a final product. And so basically all we're doing is three tablespoons of salt, uh, fill this up with water, let the salt dissolve, and then you have a fermentation salt brine that is about three to three it's about a 3 to about a 4% insulinity, and it's a perfect range for lacto-fermentation. And so, uh, to get started, how about I show you what that brine looks like in my uh, uh, sauerkraut. And so, uh, here you can tell I've got a floater, which is fine, but this has been going for about three weeks now, and my brine has a beautiful color to it uh, from the cabbage. And... Uh, you know, I've got no growth. It's all looking really good. And so that is one thing that you can tell from having a successful uh, and salty enough salt brine. All right, so to get started, I do want to show you two different types of salt. I have, this is more of, this is, of course, this is a uh, French sea salt that has some uh, refining to it, not a lot. And this one is another, this is a coarse sea salt that is completely unrefined. This I don't use very much for my fermentation projects because it makes this, this gray color does go into the, um, into the water and it does make it look in this grayness the sediment when the salt dissolves it does create a gray sediment at the bottom which technically is perfectly fine and all they are are minerals but if you're wanting a quote-unquote pretty fermentation brine this would be more of the type of salt that you would want to use and so uh and then you've got you know a liter of I like to use filtered water, but you know, in a pinch, you can use tap water. Just let it sit out for at least a day so that you have all the chlorine that will evaporate from it when you're going to use it for fermentation. Or alternatively, you can make your salt brine, uh, you know, just beforehand. And as it sits out, the chlorine, let it sit out with the top off. Uh, and the chlorine will naturally evaporate as um, you get ready for your uh, lacto fermentation project. All right, so let's tear off our micro scale. And this micro scale is going to be your new best friend for all of your fermentation projects. I use this thing every single time, no exceptions. So we're going to take our regular uh, coarse sea salt. I'm going to level it off just with the finger and we're gonna see what three full tablespoons looks like. All right, so I've got about 35 grams of salt here. And so that would create a 3.5% salinity in your salt brine for fermentation. Now, because I'm just making a regular, quote unquote, casual salt brine, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this salt. I'm going to add it to my, whoops, I'm going to add it to my bottle. Oh, I'm not pouring this very well. And then all you got to do is just top it off with a liter of water and you are all set. Let this sit. You can give it a shake or two with the cap on and, um, and let it sit for a few hours so that the salt has time to dissolve and you have a 3.5% salinity for your salt brine. All right, so now just for reference, I'm going to provide some common weight equivalencies for salt. And so this is coarse sea salt once again. And so let's look at what one level tablespoon of uh, sea salt looks like. It is about 11.2 grams, depending on, you know, of course, how fine your salt is, but this is coarse. So that's 11. And so now let's look at one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of salt is about 
In these types of fermentation projects, I would just do rounding. So I would round that up to uh, five and I would round the tablespoon up to about a 12. One final thing to take note of is that because these are uh, coarser grains, they will weigh heavier and so they will weigh more on the scale uh, compared to a finer sea salt when weighed uh, according to a tablespoon, for example. So by volume, coarse salt weighs more than fine salt. And that's about all you need to know for lacto-fermentation salt brining. Uh, it's very simple, but once you get a general gist of how things work, uh, it should be very easy and quite automatic. Uh, one other thing, I know that there might be questions about the difference between liters and quarts, and there is such a small difference in the actual volume that a quart contains compared to a liter that it really doesn't make a difference. And I often, as an experimented uh, fermenter, uh, I use liters and quarts interchangeably when it comes to salt brining because I'm not using such a precise salt uh, percentage, salinity in other words. And so uh, keep that in mind as you get started on your salt fermentate, on your salt and your fermentation projects. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Matthew Kress and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.